Merrill Lynch, the Wealth Management Division of Bank of America, predicts that the space industry will be worth close to $3 trillion in 30 years. What will that even look like? Well, there are companies trying to establish space tourism, such as Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and Orion Span. Others want to mine asteroids for resources, like Deep Space Industries and Planetary Resources. And today, we're going to explore three companies who are developing in-space construction technologies. Currently, space stations have to be cylinder-shaped in order to maximize the volume capacity of the launch vehicle. But by constructing structures in space, we'll be able to build incredible structures like space ports only found in science fiction. And this takes us to the first company, Orbital Assembly. Orbital Assembly is the business arm of the Gateway Foundation, which is the organization behind the mega spaceport, the Gateway. But more on that in a bit. So Orbital Assembly aims to be the first turnkey space construction company designed to build any structure in space quickly and with precision. Orbital's chief architect, Dr. Thomas Spilker, worked more than 20 years as both scientist and engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and worked on NASA's Voyager, Cassini, and Genesis missions. The company's near-term goal is to assemble small to medium-sized projects and they are currently developing drones that will be used on those projects. But in the long term, Orbital Assembly wants to eventually build a structure that is truly astonishing. They want to build the gateway, which looks like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Here is a rendering of the gateway next to the International Space Station and other space stations throughout history. It's absolutely massive. So the Gateway will be a spaceport with artificial gravity that measures 488 meters wide and 76 meters deep. Orbital's vision for the Gateway is to be a stopping point for people traveling to and from Earth. People traveling to Earth from colonies on the Moon and beyond will travel to the Gateway on what the Foundation calls true spaceships, and then they will travel between the Earth and the Gateway on shuttles. The Gateway will have a crew of 150 and a guest capacity of 1,250. The Gateway has four main components. First is the hub, measuring 150 meters wide. This is where the control room, storage, and viewport is located. Second is the shuttle bay. It's 120 meters wide. It's a two-deck component that will facilitate transfers between Earth shuttles and lunar and interplanetary craft. The bay contains 8 large cargo airlocks, 10 gates, and 14 activity pads to move spacecraft around. The third component is the LGA, which stands for Lunar Gravity Area, which makes up the rest of the disk area measuring 300 meters wide. As the name suggests, the artificial gravity produced is similar to the gravity experienced on the moon, which is around 20% of what you experience here on Earth. The LGA consists of a large open-air gymnasium, a restaurant, a Japanese garden and park, a concert hall, food court, and a casino. Beneath that layer, there is the LGA habitation area, which is a layer of hotel rooms. And the fourth component is the Mars Gravity Area, or MGA, making up the outer ring of the structure, measuring over 480 meters wide. The MGA produces artificial gravity that is close to what you would experience on Mars at 30% of the gravity you feel here on Earth. The MGA will consist of a series of apartments and condos that will house around 1,000 residents. In order to construct such a massive structure, Orbital Assembly plans to use a method called block construction, which is used in modern shipbuilding and involves connecting prefabricated sections. In order to do this, they plan to develop the Gateway Segment Assembly Line, or G-Cell. The way it works is materials are delivered to the G-Cell, its robotic arms receives framing material, and then places them in staging areas. Then the G-Cell systematically constructs the Gateway Segment down the automated assembly line and is carried out by drones, each segment taking 26 minutes to complete. Then the drones take the segment to the construction site to be connected to the rest of the gateway, where it's welded by other drones. And the G-Cell will be able to be reconfigured so it can construct wedge-shaped segments for the LGA edge and the MGA ring. So this is obviously all talk at this point, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for any developments on orbital assembly because it would be so awesome to someday travel to the gateway.
Okay, the second company aiming to develop in space construction technology is Made in Space, or MIS. MIS was founded in 2010 by Aaron Kemmer, and their overarching vision involves helping to establish an off Earth economy which they believe will enable humanity to spread out into the solar system. From 2011 through 2014, MIS was awarded a number of small business innovation research grants from NASA for the purpose of designing a 3D printer to be tested on the International Space Station, the ISS. They developed the Zero G printer, which was delivered to the ISS on board SpaceX commercial resupply mission 4 on September 23, 2014. In August 2017, MIS built another 3D printer that printed a 85 centimeter beam in a thermal vacuum chamber that mimicked space like conditions. And that printer went on to print a 37 meter long beam, which is a Guinness World Record for the world's longest 3D printed non assembled piece. And this was an important milestone because this technology allows the capability to adaptively manufacture things in space on demand. And this printer is a component of the Arconaut, which is a NASA funded project to develop a technology platform that enables autonomous manufacturing and assembly of large scale structures in space. The Arconaut is essentially a 3D printer with three robotic arms. In order to build the Arconaut, MIS is teaming up with Northrop Grumman, who is developing the electronics and software, along with the applied technology company Oceaneering. Who is developing the robotic arms. With the Arconaut, structures in space will be produced at a lower cost and will no longer be bound to the confines of a launch vehicle. The way it works is raw materials will be launched to the Arconaut, then the design will be beamed to the Arconaut, which then manufactures the component parts and finally assembles the structure. A prototype of the Arconaut is slated to be launched to the ISS in 2019. And hopefully, we will see it at work next year. Now, let's move on to the last company, Tethers Unlimited. Tethers Unlimited is based out of my home state of Washington. It was founded in 1944 by physicist and engineer Robert Hoyt, along with physicist and science fiction writer Robert Forward. Their mission is to build a robust in space economy that will serve the people of Earth and enable humanity to become a spacefaring society. Since its founding, Tethers Unlimited has been awarded dozens of research contracts from NASA, DARPA, and other government agencies. Through these contracts, they developed robotic assembly, fabrication, navigation sensor, and other advanced technologies. But today we'll focus on their in space manufacturing technology, namely the Spider Fab system. Similar to Made in Space's Arconaut, the Spider Fab system aims to combine 3D printing technology with the robotic assembly technology. The Spider Fab is an in space manufacturing system or suite of technologies capable of constructing large objects in space. It's a multi armed robot that fabricates structural elements and joins the pieces together like a web. Those pieces are manufactured in space using compact materials that are easily launched like spools of thread to form large truss based structures. Tethers have developed a prototype device that demonstrates the ability to create the trusses called a trussellator. In order to fund the development, the company was awarded numerous contracts, including a $750,000 contract from NASA in 2014. Here's a demonstration video of the trussellator converting spools of carbon fiber feedstock into a high performance carbon fiber truss at a rate of 5 centimeters per minute. The foil looking material on the sides are mock solar panels. And here is a demonstration video of the robotic assembly technology. It's an industrial robot equipped with vision based software that enables it to locate the trusses and assemble structures. And the company hopes that the Spider Fab system will have opportunities to construct structures such as big radio antennas, spacecraft booms, and solar arrays in the next decade or so. But CEO and founder Hoyt has much bigger plans beyond that. Here's a quote from Hoyt from 2014. He said, Our really long term objective for all of this work is to eventually enable the use of in situ resources to construct the infrastructure in space needed to support humanity's expansion throughout the solar system. End quote. Tethers Unlimited will eventually combine and integrate the technologies and someday build a factory in space capable of building the infrastructure for a self supporting economy in space. 
which is estimated to be worth $3 trillion in 30 years. And thanks to emerging in-space manufacturing technology, it's going to be awesome. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey. Hey guys, I'd like to thank my pal Philip Zabaz for suggesting this topic. This was another awesome topic to explore and it got me thinking about the future. As launch cost continues to drop, I think it's time to start expanding what we believe is possible in space. And I'm so excited to someday see massive spaceports in cislunar space, to see moon bases and asteroid mining. There are so many space related companies who are working towards these awesome concepts. There will likely be hundreds of others that will spring up as the space economy grows. And it's going to be so awesome to explore them all here at Neoscribe. So I'd like to send a huge thank you to Quarantine and Jerry Robinson for pledging their support on Patreon. You guys are amazing. And if you connect with my content and want to help support this channel, you can check out my Patreon page in the description below. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month. Every bit helps. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.